resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Peterborough Court. Yeah. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker, and it is a real honour uh, to stand in the House of Commons today and to speak on such an important committee report. For folks watching and paying attention at home, this is from the National Defence Committee report. Uh, it is the eighth report, Standing Committee on National Defence, uh, an increase in rental housing costs for Canadian military personnel that says, given that rent for Canadian military personnel living on bases is increasing this April and at a time when the military is struggling to recruit and retain personnel, the committee report to the House that the government immediately cancel all plans to increase rent on military accommodations used by the Department of National Defence. Now, as my, my member um, and colleague from Selkirk has, has mentioned and eloquently stated before me, this is, um, this is a pretty serious thing. And I want to tell you a story about what happened uh, recently. I traveled to New Brunswick and I went to the Oro Moncto Food Bank. Now, the Oro Moncto Food Bank is run by incredible volunteers like most food banks across this country that have seen historical high usages. If we could, in this house, just a round of applause for the people and volunteers that are feeding Canadians across this country. I think that would be amazing. And when I got to Oro Moncto, um, I walked in with my, my colleague, um, and I can never remember Richard Bregdon's um, riding name. Tobik Maktukak. Uh, to I can never say it properly. Tobik Maktukak. He's an incredible man, so I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Bregdon. I know we're not supposed to use names in the house. I know. Um, but I walked into this food bank, and there's these two incredible uh, humans there. There's Elizabeth and Jane. And um, we walk into the office, and I believe the woman behind the office, her name was Dolores, and they were working. And Jane was standing in front of a map of the area that they serve. And in the area, you can see this is a, a rural kind of area, and she's talking about the record usage of food bank uh, usage that they've seen since they opened, which was 13 years ago. It has just steadily gone up. And they serve about 450 families a month, which is a shocking number. And while Jane was talking, she was telling me this number, and I happened to look behind her, and the map behind her had this big patch in the map, and it was CFB Gagetown. Now, for people who know the Canadian Forces, CFB uh, Gagetown is the Canada's largest training facility. Uh, most military personnel go there to train. It is a phenomenal facility. And for all of our men and women who've served in uniform, most of them have at some point served in Gagetown. It's incredible. And so I don't know why, but I said, well, you wouldn't be serving anyone from Gagetown here at the Oro Moncto Food Bank, right, Jane? And what she said next to me literally shocked me. She said, yeah, Michelle, we're serving about 40 to 50 families a month from CFB Gagetown. I said, I'm par pardon, what, what did you just say? And she said, yeah. And I said, does, does the general public know this? And she said, I don't know. You have the front line to defend our country and they're relying on a food bank. I, I was literally gobsmacked at this information. To me, that's like your doctors or nurses or the people who, are, who work to serve you, to keep you safe, having to use a food bank in Canada, in a G7 country. I said, Jane, you've got to be kidding me. And she said, Michelle, I'm not. I'm not kidding you. I couldn't, I barely could hear the rest of what she told me. So we went further into the food bank and we looked and then she said, and Michelle, you should also know that most of these military families, their house is heated by gas or oil and they pay carbon tax. And so I said, do you think carbon tax has an impact on these military families accessing food banks? She said, yes, it has an impact on everything, Michelle, because the cost of food has skyrocketed. Because the cost of housing has skyrocketed. Do you know what you need to build houses? You need materials. What do you need to get the materials? You need fuel to get them there. It's a, it's a really common sense concept that the cult 
on the other side of this House has doubled down on and said, we're going to fight this. Like, it's, it's, it's actually the most frustrating thing for Canadians to witness. And so when you have this motion and you have, you have Canadian military families who are now going to suffer even further, hey, we're going to increase your rent. Why are they increasing their rent? These are always the things I challenge everyone at home to say, why? Why does the government need to increase their rent? Because they spend like maniacs and they have to make up for it. Right. That's why. Right. You have to ask why in every single thing you see come through this house. Why would they increase their rent? That makes no sense. These are our frontline men and women. And also, just for note, it's April. Did you know that April is the month of the military child? I'm the Shadow Minister for Families, Children and Social Development. Children are our most precious resource in this country. Teen suicide is at an all-time high in this country. Military families already have an abnormal amount of stress in their life. Families are, are separated. They have to, they have to do an, an extreme amount of resilience. They have to have an extreme amount of resilience. These, these children of these military families. Do you know what you can't do for your family? Be present when you're worried about paying your bills, or even worse, how to feed them. When you have to decide, and you're sitting down, like most common sense ca Canadians are doing in this country, and they're sitting every night, do I have enough money for this? Do I have enough money for this? And these aren't luxuries, Madam Speaker, these are basic necessities. And this Department of National Defense wants to increase rent on military families when you have the record low recruitment and retention in history. We are short 16,000 military personnel. 16,000. I want to find you this quote that I read that was just Shocking, if I can find it, if you can bear with me. The military's chaplain general says, morale among troops is the lowest it's been in recent memory as many soldiers struggle with the cost of living. In a briefing note sent to the chief of the defense staff, General Wayne Eyre, cha uh, chaplains say more armed forces members have been asking to help make ends meet. Gee, I wonder why nobody wants to join the Canadian forces. Come work with us. You get to use a food bank. Come work with us. You won't be able to afford housing. You have organizations, Homes for Heroes, who are out on the front lines trying to ensure veterans are housed. You have veterans' claims coming through every MP's office in this House that are not being met. They're being disregarded. Thank you. It's it says so much about your country and how you treat the people that protect you. And I am very fortunate in my former career to have spent time with families of the military, of the Canadian Forces. And these people serve for something bigger than themselves. And this is how our government treats them. We can do better. We have to do better. And I encourage everyone in this House to recognize the service, because when the day comes that you need someone to stand in front and protect you, you better hope that person is there. Because that's what they do. That's what the Canadian Forces is. And the Common Sense Conservatives stands with them. We will fight with them. And we will ensure that there is freedom for them to be able to afford to eat, heat, and house themselves. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh -huh. Questions and comments? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Government House Yes, you know something, Madam Speaker, it's, it's somewhat pathetic 
When you listen to conservatives try to uh, defend their own previous record in regards to the Canadian forces and then have the tenacity to try to say that the government of Canada is not uh, doing what it should be doing uh, for our Canadian forces, when in fact, Madam Speaker, we have and continue to invest in our Canadian forces far greater than the Conservative government ever did. Nor did we shut down veterans' offices. In fact, we're on target of getting to the a percentage of, I believe it's about 1.7 percent of our GDP by 2030. Compare that to less than a percentage point under Stephen Harper, uh, Madam, Spe uh, Madam Speaker. How does the Conservative Party live with itself when it actually tries to give the false impression that they care about the Canadian forces here in Canada? The Honourable Member for peterborough Quarter. Madam Speaker, do you know what is so pathetic? Is a government that's been in power for eight years and says, you know, well, when that happened way back then, that's the problem. And this is the reality. I think it is the most bizarre argument I've ever heard in my life to blame the past when you have been in power for eight years, eight years, and there has never been this historical high usage of food bank usage by military families. But that's, that's their argument. Madam Speaker, I think we know who's pathetic. Yeah. yeah. Questions and comments. The Honourable Member for New Westminster Burnaby. Well, thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. It, it is a sacred trust that women and men in, the, in uniform in this country need to be treated with respect at all times. And that's why I said men and women in uniform need to be treated with respect at all times. And, and that's why it's the NDP that actually produced the motion that led to this report that is on the floor of the House of Commons. We, we believe uh, fundamentally that it is important to provide uh, services for those who are willing to put their lives and their physical well-being on the line for the country. Uh, I was incredibly dismayed, as were most Canadians, over the period of the Harper regime where veteran services were slashed. Veterans forced to drive hundreds of kilometers in order to access the services that before had been available in their community. It was despicable. It was a, an absolute lack of, of total respect uh, for those who give their lives for our country and those veterans of our country. Now, it seems to me, Madam, Madam Speaker, that it is important to make those investments in housing, but it's also important to apologize for the past. Will a member apologize for the despicable actions of the Harper regime in cutting veterans service? The Honourable Member for Peterborough Court. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, again, I, I, I just I can't understand why we are not talking about what is happening right now. This is such a, a bizarre, distracting tactic to me. Like, this is what's happening right now on the ground. This, you, you are in government and that member is talking out of both sides of his mouth because what he's saying is we put forward this motion, thank you, but at the same time we're going to continue to prop up this Liberal government that has That's caused right. so much chaos yeah. and suffering. That's right. So yeah. which one is it? Like whose team are you on? Because right now that member's leader is holding this government in power and caused the worst inflation in history, caused the record high usage in food banks, and caused right. military families to That's not be right. able to be housed and to have to use food banks. It makes no sense. Yeah. Yeah. A very brief question from the Honourable Member for Southwick Interlake Eastman. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. I just want to thank my colleague from uh, Peterborough, Karwak, Kawartha, for her great uh, uh, speech just now. And I just want to quickly ask her, uh, as, as we already know, that, uh, that these, these Liberals, back in the day under Jean Chrétien, it was called the Decade of Darkness. I had a veteran tell me here the other day that under these current Liberals, it's a decade of disaster. And when we were government, whenever anyone complained about housing or being unhoused or having to use food banks, it all happened under this Liberal's watch. So I just asked my colleague if she believes that the Minister of National Defence should actually roll back this rent increase on our troops and properly support them and house their families. Very, very brief answer from the Honourable Member for Peterborough Court. Absolutely. 100%. I mean, that's why we're here today. We are here to support them. 
And if the Liberals want to put their money where their mouth is, not that they have any money left because they've spent all of yours, Madam <laughs> Speaker, they can support this report and they can re reverse that rent and, and actually send a message to people out there. You know what? Kids watching who thought it would always be a dream to go work for the Canadian Forces and join the Forces and serve right. their country, that yes, there's a place for you and you will be taken care of. Yeah. Resuming debate, uh, uh, the Honourable Member for